Hi everyone, Mrs V here and today we are going to be talking about concentration and how it affects the rate of chemical reactions. So let's get that PowerPoint on and let's get right into it. Today we're going to use our knowledge of collision theory to examine ways that we can actually control the rate of a chemical reaction. This tutorial is going to look at the effect of the concentration of reactants on the rate of a chemical reaction. Why do we even need to control the rate of a chemical reaction? Well, we want to speed up useful reactions, like say if we were using a chemical reaction to make a product that we wanted to sell, we'd want to be making that product as fast as possible. We also want to slow down unwanted reactions, things like rusting, which cost the economy so much that a country's gross domestic product correlates well with the amount that country spends on protecting structures from corrosion. Slowing down the biochemical reactions that result in aging is a multi-billion dollar industry. So it's really important for us to actually have some control over the rate of chemical reactions. There are many factors that influence the rate of a chemical reaction. Today we're going to focus on the concentration of reactants. In our previous video, we performed an experiment to investigate the effect of concentration of reactants on reaction rate. We did a reaction of marble chips with hydrochloric acid and we measured the mass of carbon dioxide produced at various time intervals. Then we changed the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. Now I've calculated the reaction rate over the first minute for each acid concentration and I've graphed the results. You can see that the increased concentration of the hydrochloric acid increased the average rate of reaction over that first minute and the trend we observed was pretty close to a linear trend. Okay, We've got a very very strong R squared value. Remember R squared closer to 1 shows that your data fits that trend better. So here we have a very high R squared value and therefore this data is fitting that linear trend really well. Let's briefly summarize what we learned in our video on the collision theory of reactions. We learned that to be effective, a collision between molecules has to occur with correct orientation so that new bonds can form and also the sum of kinetic energy of the colliding molecules has to be at least equal to the activation energy for the reaction. The more effective collisions that can occur in a given time period, like per second, the faster that reaction is. So all we need to do is get more of those effective collisions happening per second and our reaction will speed up. Now in reality only a very small fraction of collisions are effective collisions and what we're going to do is assume that this fraction is fairly constant for a given reaction. Collisions happen because the molecules are whizzing around randomly. They bounce off the walls of the container, but they also bounce off each other, and that's what we call a collision. Increasing the concentration of reactants just puts more molecules into the same container size. So imagine if I put 10 people in a room. I blindfold them, and I make them wear earmuffs so they can't see or hear each other. I ask them to move around. There's going to be some collisions with the walls, and some collisions with the other people. Now imagine that I put 50 people in that same room, again blindfolded, wearing earmuffs, and I ask them to move around. There will be more collisions just because the room is more crowded. The same thing happens with molecules. With more molecules in the same size container, it's more crowded. So we see here, we've got more collisions happening just because we've got more molecules now suppose there's a fairly constant 1% of collisions that are effective and actually result in a chemical reaction. So if you had a thousand molecules, then you're going to have 10 effective collisions. If you have 2000 molecules, then you're going to have 20 effective collisions. If you have 3000 molecules, then you're going to have 30 effective collisions and so on. Having more collisions statistically increases the number of effective collisions. That just means that you're taking the same percentage, but you're taking that percentage of a bigger number. If you have more effective collisions per second, then you're going to have a higher rate of reaction. So that's how increasing the concentration increases the rate of reaction. Now I'm going to give you a little exam hint here. 
don't start rambling on about effective collisions in your answer without actually explaining what that term means. In fact, the first part of the question on the effect of concentration on reaction rate might actually ask you to explain what an effective collision is. Certainly when I write exam questions on reaction rate, there's always marks for explaining what the effective collision is. So how do you do that? You say an effective collision is one that has the sum of kinetic energy of the colliding molecules greater than or equal to the activation energy for the reaction and that the molecules have correct orientation for collision. So there you have it. That's how to explain how increasing the concentration of reactants increases the rate of reaction using the collision theory. Well, I hope you understand a little more now about how the concentration of reactants can affect the rate of reaction. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. And that way you can watch lots more videos and learn more about this wonderful subject of chemistry. I am going to see you guys in the next video.